So if you look at the indicators, you can read about this and learn about it. One of the questions I'm getting a lot is like, hey, yeah, you showed us these smart rules, but we don't know what to do with, I don't know what to do with them. So here's what they look like. These are snort rules for it. When you take those and pull them down, you might see something that looks like the following here. This is what it looks like in a, if you go to the GitHub and open it up and, and look at it in raw format, it's just basically a text file that looks like this. So what's going on here is these are snort rules that are saying, hey, alert me to any TCP traffic that's going to this interface coming from anywhere over any port coming from here going to anywhere. So this is the any any's means coming from anywhere over any port. And it's saying if it has this, when you look at content here, where the actual real part of the rule is, is everything that comes after the first content. Saying if the content matches this criteria, alert me. So you can see some pretty interesting ones here. The ones I wanna focus on though, are what I'm gonna call the direct actions ones for you guys. It's starting about right here, all right? Now, this is one of the most common domains that this thing will make a call out to is the AVSM or avsvmcloud.com uh, domain. So what's happened, as we said, this was a bigger problem four days ago than it is today because of the fact that, as we said, Microsoft is sinkhole these, but here's the thing. You still need to pay close attention because if this thing moved horizontally, and this malware was copied to other places, this is a great way for you to find out other points of infection, all right? So just because the domains have been sinkhole, that does not mean you can go to sleep and relax about it. You still have to find what the extent of horizontal movement and exposure is inside your environment. And if you're still looking for these beacons going outside, you may find other devices that were compromised that you didn't know about uh, from the initial infection. So it's a good idea to look for these still, even if you don't, uh, if you're not worried about the domains. So we got that one, we got the digitalcollege.org, freescanonline.com, defsecurity.com. This is the one I'm gonna use to kind of show, walk you through the demo the dotcloud.com, virtualdataserver.com, and the list goes on with those uh, being repeated. There's also one that's commonly seen as initial beacon, this incomeupdate.com. Uh, that's one that we look for and we've seen quite frequently. And there's Zupertech and a few others, okay? The point is, is these are snort rules. And what that means is all you have to do is go to snort.org. This is a free open source software. Download it onto your machine double click the installation, run it, and when you finish installing it, it will create for you a snort directory that looks like this, okay? Once you've done that, you want to go to the rules directory and you can create your own little text file rules or you can do like I did for this demo. Open this back door one here and simply take one of the rules and this is just how you kind of get yourself comfortable with it. So I'm gonna take the, uh, the deaf security one, this rule right here, I can copy and paste that right out of here, right, into my backdoor rule, so it ends up looking like that, okay? Now I save that, and that is now one of the snort rules. So what happens, and now I'm gonna show you how to run snort, you'll need to first, once you open a command prompt, you will need to, because you'll end up being like, probably uh, depending on which user you are. If you have admin privileges, you'll be here. So you'll need the first. And again, I'm not trying to be real basic here, but I realize some of you may have never done this or may have never used Snort, or maybe you're not that familiar with the command line. But once you get it installed, follow it, click next, follow the instructions, open a command prompt. I think everybody on this meeting can do that. And then once you get there, just CD, you know, to Snort, and then bin, okay? That puts you in the Snort directory. 
Now to run Snort, you simply, let me just spread this out so you can see it a little bit better. Because I don't want you to be confused like about where the, uh, commands and all that are. So this is how you run it. Basically, I'm just saying, hey, Snort, I want you to run. I want you to send alerts to the console. I want you to listen on interface one. The configuration file I want you to use is this one. Okay, so you have to tell it to use that configuration file because that's how it's gonna really know how to get to your rules and all that. And if there's any alerts, I want you to bash L log those alerts to this directory. I want you to log those alerts in PCAP format, right? That's what we're saying in that command. Now, for some of you, again, depending on what devices you have configured, like you may not have interface one. So one of the common things that I get feedback from when I show people this is like, well, my snort says there's no interface one. So what you wanna do is just snort dash capital W and it'll show you the interfaces that you have available. So whichever one, it is it's got the ip that you want to listen on that will be the interface that you would pick you might have three or four here as you can see i have interface one so i'm telling it right here dash i one that's interface one that's not an l now we are recording this so this is going to be a youtube video uh, which means you can go back and watch this and slow it down and kind of go through these steps and set it up without going at the speed that i'm having to go at now so once you have figured out that interface, it's a matter of just running it. And it'll sit and load its preprocessors and all that. All right, so once it says commencing packet processing, it's running. And all that means is it's looking at every packet that comes in and every packet that goes out. So what I'm gonna do here is trigger a beacon. I'm gonna emulate a beacon from uh, this malware. All right, so it went out. As a result of that, look at what just happened in Snort. It generated an alert that says, look, APT backdoor, MSIL sunburst. So it's telling us that we just, I just saw activity that looked exactly like the sunburst malware. And really the only thing that should be going, if you see anything in your environment going out or even trying to go horizontal, that anything with the word death security, you should be alarmed by that. You should kind of look at that as a problem. So you want to create that rule. The way we created that rule here, you'll want to create one of these for every one of these signatures. Just take a few minutes, but just literally copy and paste it in there. The rule is already properly formatted and all that. Again, I'm not, you don't even have to, I'm not trying to teach you snort rule writing syntax. If you want to learn what all these things mean, fine but this is not what this is. This is meant to get you up and running like today, right? And then you can go and dig into the rules and figure out how they're working a little bit later. So we can see we got an alert there that worked. All right, so let's go ahead and stop Snort. So remember we told it to log stuff to K or to C Snort logs. So if I go to C Snort log, you can see that uh, there is a log file. Let's sort this by date modified. You can see 1218 is right today. It says uh, 1134. Right now, this thing thinks it's 1136. So this is the log file that was just created. So what you can do with that is a lot of things. One, you can look at it in Wireshark because Wireshark automatically um, is able to parse PCAP files. So that's the reason I said in my snort command to write it out to PCAP, because that gives me the, the best opportunity to be able to export it out and look at it in any parser to view that, that log file. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.